So at my day job, I was overdue for an upgrade, and I recently received a 16-inch M1 MacBook Pro. Now, if you work at any tech company, as a developer, you probably get provided a laptop for your daily development needs. Each company is different, but a typical time for a laptop refresh is about two to four years. I got just that. Uh, I got my new laptop only just a couple weeks ago, and I contemplated on what new improvements I'm gonna make in my development environment. I ultimately made two changes that I'm gonna to share today in this video, uh, and I'm gonna jump right in and just let you know that one is oh my ZSH. One thing to note that the M1 Mac was first announced back in 2020 with ZSH as the default shell. For years, I've been only using Bash exclusively because that's what actually was given to me in my laptop. Another thing to note is that the Bash setup that comes out of the box for every other MacBook prior has never been updated since 2007. Now my usual strategy for setting up a new dev machine is to copy the Bash profile or the Bash RC over to the new dev, dev machine. Now I usually have some dot files on GitHub. Uh, actually normally what I use is, is GitHub gist and uh, I probably should use dot files on GitHub and keep those in version control, but I don't. What? So since now the new default is ZSH, I saw an opportunity to research more in some different tooling. Now, on my ZSH is a framework that's been around for some time. It's built on top of ZSH. It's structured to allow plugins, themes, and provide basic shell environment settings from the start. So with a little ease, uh, you can leverage 275 plus plugins to install like Go and Rust into your environment path um, without much effort. So some plugins that might be worth looking into is like things like AWS CLI plugins for managing multiple profiles. Uh, and framework specific plugins like Flutter. Uh, I actually don't even know how to install Flutter, but with Open ZSH, I can actually get Flutter installed in my machine uh, with no effort. Open ZSH, again, it's an open source project, definitely check it out. Um, and if you're interested in adding your own plugins, it's, it's open source, so feel free to add some contributions. So my go-to node version management system forever has been NVM. Uh, I've actually never thought about ever using any anything besides NVM, mainly because out of inertia. Now, same thing with the, my bash setup, uh, oh my ZSH got me the change. And I think this new tool, which is called Volta, is actually gonna get me to change so much more about my, my generic Node.js setup. My expectations have been coerced into where they are today because I was able to learn Node the hard way, which is on the drop. Uh, I never actually allowed myself like extra brain cycles or opportunity to look for new tooling in the Node ecosystem, mainly because every time I set up a machine, it was usually, I was required, not really required, but I had expectations of just, hitting the ground running and starting the right codes. And when I was recently on Twitch setting up my new Apple Silicon M1 MacBook Pro, some other examples of Node version management was actually given to me uh, just to check out and uh, I had to try it out. Volta is the one that was actually shared with me and the one I actually ended up going with. Now, Volta is a built-in Rust and ships as a snappy static binary, which means you can install it and run on any JS tool quickly and seamlessly. Now with Volta, you could select a node engine once and lose the need to manage to load in correct versions constantly. So every time you switch to different projects. Uh, this was always a challenge whenever I was working on multiple projects in different terminals or comparing projects or switching machines. Uh, I always have like the wrong node version installed, especially if, if I'm using the latest and greatest version uh, for whatever project I'm working on. So in past experiences, the version did all, not always line up. And I need to use MVM in my batch profile to load it right and correctly the first time, every time I open up my, my new machine. Now, Volta pre prevents that need to reinstall node versions on every upgrade. And uh, the way they do that is actually through their own versions of engines. Now, this is actually something that I know some folks are not really into having Volta not used in regular no engine um, structure, but I think their approach is good and it's also written in Rust, so it's pretty fast and snappy. So if you're ready to take make that trade off, uh, I think you'll be fine with this. But if you wanna be the uh, purest node engineer, uh, then you probably wanna look at things like N or stick with MVM. Volta has a seamless per project version switching. Now you can manage node versions on a project basis. Uh, you can install into the package binaries into your tool chain without having a periodic reinstall uh, to also figure out and why they've stopped working. Uh, on most Unix systems, you can install Volta with a single command, uh, which is the curl command right there from the website. And with that, Volta will also append to your path. So again, going back to oh my ZSH, if you're running a ZSH, Volta will know to install it to the path there, but also install Node right away as soon as you have Volta installed. Now Volta can also install your favorite package binaries at the command line. Uh, without worrying about interfering with your local development projects. 
So things like the Netlify CLI, which I use all the time to quickly deploy a site or my design system up to Netlify um, or different versions up to Netlify, uh, I can install that using Volta install Netlify. Uh, and even better, these tools actually get pinned to a particular node engine at installation time. So they don't change until you explicitly tell them to. So if you're using an older version that maybe is not using ESM modules or you want to use an older version of Node for testing purposes, you can do so and use old versions inside of different projects. Uh, this always comes up whenever I have to go update an old project that wasn't touched by any team for a long time and I have to revive it, uh, which honestly, it actually happens a lot <laughs> for some reason. I, I tend to touch projects that no one really cares about anymore. Contemplating the state of dev tools in 2022, I got using virtual environment tooling from things like Repl.it and GitHub Codespaces for existing project work. This is how I sort of survived without setting up my Mac day one uh, and sort of still being able to ship code without the need to make a decision on what sort of tooling I was gonna use. So I do plan on actually walking through in a future video on how I sort of got by and what are the sort of the tools you can leverage today without installing Homebrew and all this other stuff on your machine. We have to write code from our iPads or from our Chromebooks or even from our Tesla. Um, so for that reason, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and write a blog post on that soon and also share that in a future video. Finally, I'm actually curious, what are the first couple tools that you're installing on your new machine? So if you've gotten your new MacBook or maybe you've got a, a Windows machine or Linux, what are the first couple tools that you install? Uh, leave a comment below and I would love to check this out and maybe mention them in a future video. Thank you.